Christ event, then that means God has lied multiple times over. And I cannot stress this. Titus 1-2. God cannot lie. Since God cannot lie, the flood had to be a global event. Amen. It covered not just where Noah lived, it covered the entire planet. Amen. The entire planet was consumed in this flood. Amen. And if you could, if you was able to go backwards in time in a space shuttle and look at planet Earth during the days of the flood, you would see nothing but a ball of water with one little 450 foot long object floating along the top of it. Noah's Ark. That's what you'd see. That flood was a global event. It was not a localized event. Because God can't lie. He cannot lie. Alright? I mentioned about the genealogy, and for the sake of time, I'm not going to go through all of these dates and years. But when did the flood occur after creation? Well, we can look at the Bible, we can look at genealogy, mainly in chapter 5 of Genesis, and we can figure that out. Where so-and-so begat so-and-so and on down the line, it adds up to 1,656 years after creation. So for 1,656 years, God basically said, I will let humanity's conscience be his guide. And let's see where it gets him. Where did he get him? Almost complete extinction. Not. God was like, I can't put up with you anymore. I'm going to start over with one thing. For 1,656 years after creation is when the flood occurred. Now, from present day, when did it occur? Bible scholars say about 4360 to 4400 years ago, give or take a few years, somewhere in that neighborhood, is when the flood occurred. For the sake of this discussion, I'm going to go with the round number of 4,400 in just a minute. Okay, so just, just for the sake of this discussion, let's say it was 4,400 years ago. Okay? And bear that in mind as we go through this. What happened to the ark? Where did it come to rest? Well, the Bible tells us what happened to it. It came to rest upon a mountain called Ararat. Where's Mount Ararat? Well, you can find that <coughs> on a map. This here is a picture of of the capital city of Yerevan, which is in the Republic of Armenia. So this is Armenia, the capital city. Behind it, this is Mount Ararat. Over here to the left, kind of behind it to the left, is a mountain called Lesser Ararat. It's about 3,500 feet shorter than Mount Ararat. Mount Ararat is nearly 17,000 feet tall. And this is where the ark came to rest. It's the tallest mountain in this region of the world. And you see where it's located here in eastern Anatolia region of Turkey, near the border of Iran and Armenia. That is where Mount Ararat is. And to put this number in perspective, if Mount Ararat was in North America, it would be the 10th tallest mountain in the North American continent. That's Canada, U.S., Mexico. In North America, it would be the 10th tallest mountain. If that Kind of helps you get an idea, perspective of how tall Mount Ararat is. The scriptures tell us this is where it ended up coming to rest. Right here on the border near Armenia. I thought that this was interesting and I wanted to share it with you. In 2010, there was a scientific expedition of Turkish and Chinese people who went to Ararat to see if they could find Noah's Ark. They took a video camera. Not long after they videoed this, the Chinese government said, no, they didn't find it. They didn't know. And they, they immediately banned the video in China. And they said, no, they didn't find it. Well, somebody managed to sneak the video on YouTube, and I managed to get some screenshots of it before it got taken down. In 2010, they found the remnants of this object that was resting 13,000 feet on top of Mount Ararat. When they go inside, if you can get a picture of this, this is an individual standing and look what looks like a corridor made out of wood. They zoomed in with their camera. You can see what looks like a wooden peg sticking through a piece of wood. Some more pieces.
pieces of wood here. There's an old piece of rope where the wood planks are at that they were pointing to. This is a vast chamber. It was kind of hard to see. It was dark, so there's a vast chamber that they were inside of. And a number of times they would put their hands in front of the camera and they would be looking down at the wood and they would go like that to let you see that it wasn't rock, that it was wood. It was petrified wood that they were touching and they were walking through. They took some wood from this object and they did some carbon dating on it. And they deduced that the carbon dating of this object was about 4,800 years old. When I got to thinking about that, Pastor, I was like, well, that's very accurate. Because if the flood was, and again, we'll use that round number of 4,400 years ago, the flood occurred 4,400 years ago, God had his 120-year deadline or ultimatum that I'm sending a flood on. Noah had to cut down trees to construct the ark with, right? Well, he wasn't going to use a sapling tree to make a vessel that large. He had to find trees that had been growing for a while. He had to find trees that were large enough to make the planks out of this vessel, right? So you know and I know that it takes a couple of centuries for a tree to grow to that size. So when you start to add all this up, it comes up to be about 4,800 years, doesn't it? Do I think they found Noah's Ark? I think they did. I really do. Now, other than looking at this video on YouTube, I don't have any other evidence or proof of it, but my heart tells me they found it. Now, did, that, did I have to see a video to convince me that the Word of God is true? No. I, think, I hope I've made it abundantly clear at the beginning of this that since God can't lie, if this is His book, I take it at face value, regardless whether I have physical evidence or not. But isn't it nice when things like this come up? Isn't it nice when you see things like this? Just, just God kind of giving us a little wink and said, see, yeah. I don't lie. See, I tell you the truth. See, you can take me at face value. I always like that. One last thing and I'll be done. I've been mentioning this to my Sunday school class a lot here lately. We are definitely in the last days. We are seeing this world in such a mess as it's never been before. Jesus Christ himself said, as it was in the days of Noah, he didn't pick Moses, he didn't pick David, he didn't pick Solomon. He said, as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be in the Son of Man returns. What are we seeing in our world today? We are seeing a prevailing philosophy of there is no absolutes. There is no absolute right or wrong. Everything shades of gray. Does that not sound like letting your conscience be your guide? Yeah. Let your conscience tell you what you think is right or wrong. Don't worry about don't worry about the Bible. Don't worry about things that really tell you here. Here's the definitive yes answer. Here's the definitive no answer. Don't worry about that. It's all shades of gray. Are we not seeing that? Absolutely we are. We are in the last days, folks. Now, Noah had the benefit of God telling him, Noah, it's going to happen in about 120 years. Get ready. All we know is that it's going to happen in the hour of the thing of God. Amen. So what am I saying? I'm saying to you, uh, especially, specifically saying to people who are watching my video, if you don't want the judgment of God, if you don't want to go through the judgment of God that will happen after we're gone, the only way you're going to escape is by trusting Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. That is the only way. There is no option B or C or D. There is only one way to heaven, and that is through Jesus Christ. Amen. There was only one ark made. There was not a fleet of arks, was there? No. God didn't say, Noah built a, a cruise line of arks. And if they don't want to be on your ark, then they can get on Jacob's ark. If they don't want to get on his ark, they can get on Shem's ark. No. There was no ark 2, 3, 4, 5. There was only one ark. Amen. There was only one way to escape the universal blood. You either were on the ark or you wasn't. Yeah. And if you wasn't, guess what? You died. Yeah. Put it in as candidly and as pointedly, as pointedly as I can. You were either on the ark and lived or you wasn't on the ark and you died. Salvation is the same way. 
You either know Christ and you'll have eternal life, or you don't know Christ and you're going to have eternal damnation. It's that simple. It is that simple. But unfortunately, man wants to muddy the waters and say, no, there's alternatives to this. No, there's not. There's only one way, just as there was only one way. So that's what I wanted to, to talk about tonight. So I hope that you enjoyed it. And uh, next week, we'll pick up with the most wondrous city that was ever constructed. So I thank you for being here, and I thank you for your time and your attendance. And I'll turn this back over to the pastor. Amen. Thank you, Chris. That's good. Can you go on that say amen?